Assalamu alaikum. It is my privilege and honor, and I will start, start with seeking refuge in Allah against Shaitan, the outcast. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his slave. He is the seal of the prophets and he is Allah's messenger. The prayers and the peace be upon him forever. Amin. Um, I was asked to do this. I thank Allah for the privilege. I went on my hajj with several people who are on this call in 2003. Imam Muhammad was scheduled to go and he ended up with the flu and didn't go. Awesome. Now, what I want to say is firstly, I went with the, the, uh, <clears throat> the hajjis in Atlanta. The most important thing that I can say about hajj is that everyone should take classes and talk to people who have been on the Hajj. Otherwise, you will miss your Hajj. You won't know what you're doing. You won't understand. I also highly recommend reading the biography of the Prophet Muhammad. Um, I think um, Haeko was one of them, and there's a couple of other good recommendations on the life of the Prophet that are authentic uh, recordings. Um, I want to say also, when you make the Hajj, the rituals are, are important to know so you know what steps come and why you're doing them. But it is also important when you're preparing to go. It may take you several years. I mean, I took it took me a few years to get my monies together. Once you get that money, I'm going to tell you something about that. Once you get any portion of your money, do not use it. Put that money to the side. I know it's just, we have to respect every portion of the Hajj. When we also prepare for the Hajj, we want to make sure our family knows so they'll know how to, to uh, take care of our affairs and our absence. When we go on the Hajj, um, please, if you're sincere, you don't want to use all that time and money and go over there and break your Hajj by getting angry with someone, getting into a fight, or doing something wrong because you may as well uh, call it a vacation and go home. I'll tell you this. I it is a test, a very big test to each one of us on our sincerity and uh, obedience to Allah. And um, you have to prepare yourself. You prepare yourself by the way you treat each other in your household before you leave, how you treat people on your job, how you interact with others. The test will come to us. And then once you come back, the test does not end. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Halima. Alaikum assalam. Sister Imani. Um... <laughs> I just had that when you mentioned it, just going into the holy precincts, even in air, uh, mm -hmm. it's a certain, those are so many rituals that we have to be regardful of. I'm so grateful to Imam Suleiman, who had the classes to prepare everyone for Hajj the year that I went, it was 2013. Uh, and it's true, uh, Allah has clearly made it clear in the uh, Quran. Just, you have to make the attention to not respond to negativity. Uh, for example, um, when we was in Medina, uh, I wanted to go to an ATM. We had just went into the uh, uh, into uh, the masjid and made our prayers in there. And uh, I was with this sister. She lives in Arizona. And uh, I said, I got to try to find an ATM. So I asked one of the people that worked the streets there to show me where the ATM was. And uh, they don't speak. Well, I don't know how much English they speak, but they know when you're American because they love American, American. Hacha, hacha, hacha. Mm -hmm. They want yeah. money. They know they got some American dollars. They, they, it's a whole time you're there. So uh, I said, come on, sister, devil, go follow me so I can go get this. Uh, I need to get some more money because I had American dollars that I needed to exchange it, money exchange. And so we followed him. He took me through real rapid, real fast going through that. And I came, when we got to the um, money exchange, what I thought was a money exchange, it was not a money exchange. She thought it was ATM because he didn't understand what I said. She said, see that girl, you shouldn't have went, blah, blah, blah. So when we came back, apparently he spoke to one of the other female vendors. They have these vendors that got these big, big large carts on a, it's like a, a partial wheelbarrow. And they have all their little wares and stuff that they sell. He said something to the sister. She came up behind me. I didn't know she came up behind me with that cart, knocked me down. She knocked me down. And then someone in her language said something to her. And she's all up on me. Sorry, sorry, so sorry, so sorry. But in actuality, she did that on purpose. 
But I was so upset when we went into this um, place to sell oils. It looked like a jewelry store, the way it had the uh, oils and stuff you know, on display. But it was actually an incense and oil place. Um, and I asked, I said, Where, where's the police? Do y'all have the police around? I had some lady knock me down. I was, I was so upset. Um, and I'm not a crybaby, but I was about to cry. I was so upset. He said, sister, she said, we don't, they're not here. He said, but Allah has invited you to his house. He said that a lot of these peoples are descendants of the ones who idol worshipers from way back. He said, don't let them upset you. They have lost saw the whole thing. And he said that uh, you just be at peace about it and uh, not get upset. That saved me from going slam yeah. off. And I really was very uh, humble at the time because I, I knew the Lord, Lord, my wing of humility. I was so glad to get over there when I did. But that's one of the uh, examples of where you might be tested. But, you uh, have to go with the mindset that you are wanting to make your Hodge uh, approved by Allah. Yeah. So I highly recommend as soon as, as soon as you can, start making attentions uh, and just Allah will suck you in. Once you make them attentions, if things start falling into place, we, you got to go. And uh, don't let nothing deter you. I'm sorry to take up so much time. Thank you, Sister Halima. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu This is Brother Hopik, uh, the second calling from Los Angeles, uh, California. I yeah. just want to, uh, uh, I just want to kind of add to what you've been saying, what the sister said uh, too, because I remember uh, I went, Allah blessed me to go in 95 and, and I was kind of still young. I was a youngster still. And, uh, and you know, we were in our ikram and we were on our way, we were on those hot buses, you know, the buses don't have no air, the windows barely work and it's hot. And so there was a, a brother who, I think he was from America. He was one of them brothers that was just kind of nuts, you know, uh, and he's always, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, you know, just very agitated. But he was sitting directly like behind me. So we're already hot on the bus and we're on our way to the high, just, you know, it's already hot. And this brother was just always just saying stuff and it just kind of just like he was me every time. But all of a sudden, uh, I just started smelling smoke, like smoke, like cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. This brother was smoking a cigarette on the bus, on a hot, stinky bus with, with no air conditioning, no windows mm -hmm. can roll down. And it seemed like all the smoke came directly to me. And, uh, and so, uh, so I had to kind of, and he was like, humbly lies, he was blowing the puff. Humbly lies, Allah was blowing the puff. And so I turned and said, brother, can you uh, put, so, I think I got a little aggressive, so I'm not sure if I have to make my hodge up for that. Only a lot knows, but uh, but it's a test. A lot of people think when they go to hodge that they're going to paradise. So you have mm. to be in the right mental state when you get to the hodge because Allah is inviting you to the house. He's inviting you to get closer to him. You're not going to paradise. That's what a lot of believers think. Oh, it's like, oh, I'm on vacation. I'm going to club paradise. No, the trials are going to be there when you get there. And that shocks a lot of people because they think when they get to, to the house, there's no trials. Yeah, shaitan is operating and doing what he does. And you're going to see a lot of the shaitan operating and doing things. So your mind has to be mentally prepared for that. So that's what kind of uh, 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 shocks a lot of the believers because when they get there, they see shaitan is right here. Yeah, he said, I'm going to come on the straight path. And the path don't get closer than going to the house of Allah and shaitan is right there. So we have to be in the mental state of mind that we're going for feasibility to please Allah. But know the shaitan is there operating and doing things. He just in people's ignorance, the intent, people intentionally doing things and unintentionally doing things, just say ignorance. The world is there, humanity is there and the ignorance of humanity is there. And so we just have to be mentally prepared. So we have to keep our mind state in the Hajj, in the Hajj mind state, and Allah will uh, bless you with a successful Hajj. And then learn the rituals that you have to uh, stay focused on that mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and stay in the Hajj frame of mind, and then Allah will bless you with a successful Hajj. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Halima. This is Sister Ellen Rockman. I've listened to all of the stories. I just want to share this. 
it was um, an honor indeed to listen to everyone's story.